Welcome to Traveler's Tales. I am your host, Greg Alonzo. Today we will be taking a look at your questions and comments from the Great Library of Alexandria. However, before we begin, just a reminder that we post new videos every Tuesday and Friday. Moving right along, our first question is from Axel. Axel wants to know about the papyrus documents. What exactly is papyrus and how is it made? Well, Axel, papyrus is a material similar to thick paper. In antiquity, it was used as a writing surface. Papyrus is made from the pith of the papyrus plant. It was made by cutting the stems lengthwise and pasting them together. In a dry climate like Egypt, papyrus proved to be wonderfully resilient. Our next question is from Ruslana. She wants to know, were the scrolls written in Greek or other languages as well? Ruslana, the scrolls and the codices came from most of the known world and were primarily translated into Greek, the international language of the day. Our next question is from Klaus. He wants to know what type of salaries were the philosophers and writers who taught at the Great Library were paid? Well, Klaus, the Great Library resembled a modern-day university campus. The scholars were paid large salaries, given free food and lodging, and were even exempted from paying taxes. Moving right along, Deidre wants to know what type of lodging was made available for the visiting scholars. Deidre, as previously mentioned, the library resembled a university campus. There were many classrooms, a large circular dining hall with a high dome ceiling in which all meals were eaten communally. Our next question comes from Brad. He asks, wasn't there an earthquake that destroyed much of the ancient capital of Alexandria? Yes, Brad, sadly you are correct. In the year 365 of the Common Era, a powerful earthquake off the coast of Greece caused a tsunami that devastated a large part of Alexandria. Approximately 5,000 people lost their lives and 50,000 homes were destroyed. Let's press on. Our next question is from Alosha. Alosha wants to know how well were the women scholars received by the students of the Great Library? Well, Alosha, granted sexual discrimination existed in antiquity, however, there were several women scholars who graced the halls of the Great Library. Among them was Hypatia, who was among the most brilliant philosophers of her day. Now we have a comment from Felix. He goes on to say that he was deeply saddened to learn that Hypatia was murdered by a mob of Christians and that the Great Library of Alexandria was destroyed by Christians. Felix, I agree. Hypatia fell victim to vicious rumors spread involving her in a political argument between the powers that be. Though she had little or nothing to do with the situation, she was murdered by a mob of Christians led by a lector named Peter. Let's see, moving along we have a question from Bernadette. She wants to know, was there a staff that maintained the facility? Good question, Bernadette. Yes, there was a full staff that met the daily needs of the scholars and the students. Under the rule of the Ptolemies, the attempt was to create the best atmosphere for learning. In fact, the scholars were completely freed from all burdens of everyday life so they could devote more time and research to intellectual pursuits. We have another comment, this time from Takis. He goes on to say that the Great Library of Alexandria should have been one of the wonders of the ancient world. Just the sight of hundreds of thousands of scrolls and codices must have seemed like a miracle. You know, I wholeheartedly agree with you, Takis, that with the Great Library of Alexandria, it must have been a wondrous sight to behold. The thought of all the knowledge of the then known world, written by the greatest thinkers of their day, and all in one place, is a marvel in itself. Sadly, so much has been lost to time. Our last question is from Inger. She asks, why was the Great Library 
never rebuilt. Inger, today a grand library does exist in Alexandria. It is called the Bibliotheca Alexandria. It's comprised of six specialized libraries, all which offer various lecture series. Keeping with the times, the library also offers a specialized webinar series. There is also an art center, which holds frequent art exhibitions. And lastly, the library also houses four major museums and a conference center. For anyone who visits Egypt, the Bibliotheca Alexandria is a must-see. This is the end of the Great Library of Alexandria, Part 2. As a reminder, we post new videos every Tuesday and Friday. Don't forget to hit the little bell icon to be notified each time we post new videos. For your convenience, we have also listed our email address and Instagram information. Thank you for joining us on this edition of Traveler's Tales. Traveler's Tales will return with Daily Life in Antiquity. Cartistos. <laughs>